Donald Trump is portraying himself as a religious savior. He says election day will be Christian Visibility Day. Trump has repeatedly compared his criminal trials to the crucifixion of Jesus, promoted videos calling his re-election, quote, the most important moment in human history, and that describe him as a divinely appointed ruler. A shepherd to mankind who won't ever leave nor forsake them. So God made Trump. He claims to be a holy warrior against an imaginary attack on Christianity. They want to tear down crosses, but no one will be touching the cross of Christ under the Trump administration, I swear to you. He's even selling his own version of the Bible. We must make America pray again. Trump is playing to a rising white Christian nationalist movement within the Republican Party. I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. Christian nationalists believe that the law of the land is not the Constitution, but instead the law of God, as they interpret it. Trump's supporters are increasingly overt in their calls to replace democracy with a MAGA theocracy. The church is supposed to direct the government. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. We're meant to be a Christian nation. We should be a Christian nation. Welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> We're here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will we, we will endeavor to, oh, forget, oh, to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. That was a cross he was holding. The idea that the will of voters is irrelevant because God has anointed Trump was a recurring message in the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Because it is not Joe Biden that rules this country. Jesus Christ is the king of everything in this world. In previous videos, I've highlighted how MAGA Republicans have embraced core elements of fascism. The combination of fascism and Christian nationalism is called Christofascism, a term first used half a century ago by the theologian Dorothy Zola. Fascists rise to power by characterizing their opponents as subhuman. Christofascists take it a step further by casting opponents as not just subhuman, but actually demonic. People like Nancy Pelosi, she's a demon. Framing opponents as enemies of God makes violence against them not only seem justifiable, but divinely sanctioned and almost inevitable. We are going to put on the armor of God. Yeah. And maybe strap on a Glock on the side of us just in case. When we take power, they need to be given the death penalty. And these people that are suppressing the name Christ and suppressing Christianity, they must be absolutely annihilated when we take power. Christo-fascists want to strip away a wide range of rights Americans take for granted. Former Trump staffers involved in developing plans for a second Trump term have called for imposing biblical tests on immigration, overturning marriage equality, and restricting contraception and MAGA-aligned judges are already setting their dogma ahead of the Constitution. In his concurring opinion on the case that declared frozen embryos are people, Alabama Supreme Court Chief Justice Tom Parker cited God more than 40 times and quoted the Book of Genesis and other religious texts. Nothing could be more un-American than the Christian nationalist vision. So many of America's founders came here as refugees seeking religious freedom. The framers of the Constitution were adamant that religion had no role in our government. The words God, Jesus, and Christ don't appear anywhere in the Constitution. And the very first words of the Bill of Rights are a promise that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Christofascism, or any religion-based form of government, is a rejection of everything America has aspired to be. A secular, multiracial society whose inhabitants have come from everywhere, bound together by a faith in equal opportunity, democracy, and the rule of law. Beware.